What does one say to an ancient Nephilim ghost? I suppose you start with... Nothing makes me feel good. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. What's going on YouTube? It's Filthy, and we're back with another Diablo 3 Season 31 video. Gears of Dreadlands is probably the solo XP farm build. It is just so hard to get away from this set. It is so, so powerful. With the open cube, we can squeeze a little bit more juice out of this. I've got a variant that doesn't really use the cube if you're looking at non-Season 31 stuff. Uh, they are kind of about the same, but opening up that cube does allow us to take a convention of elements and make this build just a smidge uh, a bit more powerful. Now, this is doing GR120 in a kind of four minute range at the moment with a thousand paragons. I don't have perfect gear. I've got pretty nice gear. There are only three pieces that I would actually like to improve. Uh, they'll come with time. But if this sounds interesting, as always guys, thumbs up, uh, brightens my day. So Gears of Dreadlands, pound for pound, I always say probably the best build in the game because it is fantastic for speed farming. So grinding your Paragon points out for this build is very easy. Doing your visions of enmity, key farming, all of it, it can just do absolutely everything. Bounty runs. The only thing this set is not great at uh, is actually pushing. And I don't know where I'd run out of juice with this particular build at the moment, maybe maybe 125 to 130. Um, I might be able to get a little higher than that, but I would have to change a few things around. Anywho, um, the Gears of Dreadlands basically works around casting primary skills. We take Hungering Arrow, Hungering Arrow Devouring Arrow for the cold damage. Once we get that to max stacks, we deal a whole bunch of damage and we get a whole bunch of move speed and a whole bunch of damage reduction. All you need to do is every so often pop your ability, uh, which is your primary skill and that'll get your momentum stacks they, they decay after four seconds and then you just need to press it again uh, and it refreshes which is really nice hunter's wrath belt goes in the cube for the maximum modifier the best version of this build i think opens up the cube with the convention of elements with the siri satchel on the character it is quite difficult to get a, a nice Siri Satchel. Ideally, you know, you are looking for the crit chance. You're looking for the really high hungering arrow damage at 600%. You're looking for like a decent roll on the attack speed, crit chance. You could roll hungering arrow damage on, I think, where I've got cooldown here. You would probably want to take hungering arrow damage uh, or maybe area damage for a little bit more uh, juice. Focus and restraint, of course. So we proc one part with strafe, we proc one part with hungering arrows. So that's all absolutely fine. My rings, uh, this one is okay because it's got double crit. I don't want the dexterity. I would like either cooldown or area damage, or ideally an ancient one with actual just raw damage on it. Exact same stats on the focus uh, at the moment. This is the best one I've found. I haven't done any reforging uh, for this. We've got the depth diggers on the character. I've been very lucky and found, yes, another usable primal, uh, which is really nice. Depth diggers, of course, add 100% to primary skills. You want to get your hungering arrow damage on there. Then we're going for the guardian set early on, quite powerful. It's doubling our main stat. It's adding damage reduction. Uh, it's doubling up uh, our vitality. It adds a lot of toughness and damage to us. Hungering arrow damage, of course, on the belt. Later on into the season, the hunter's wrath would come onto the character. And then the um, Ore Guild set, I guess, would come on probably for the shoulders and the braces loss. Uh, I guess that's probably what we would do. Um, and then Depth Diggers kind of in the cube here where the Hunter's Wrath is. But for the moment, we've got the Depth Diggers on. We've got Trapped for more damage. We've got Simplicity Strength for damage. And importantly, Recovery, because uh, we do take quite a lot of hits with this build. I mean, if you're a very skilled player, you can dodge and weave and keep up your Squirts bonus. Uh, but I'm a bit of a klutz and I drop mine quite a lot. Uh, I will talk about another variation of the build that's maybe a little easier uh, to play as well. We've got the Taguk for more damage. Squirt is double damage when the bonus is up like this. Uh, when it is not up, of course, we are taking extra damage ourselves. No real shielding in this, but when you do collect the health globes, you will get a little bit of a shield. You can pop your smoke screen displacement to try and avoid stuff. Um, and other than that, just try and not stand in stuff basically uh, we've got diamonds for toughness in the chest and in the trousers diamond for the cooldown reduction in the helmet as always we're looking to try and get to that 37 38 uh, break point i think is for the for the vengeance dark heart rune on there for 50 percent damage reduction of course this gives us extra uh, damage as well i would highly recommend 
getting a primal weapon to start off with because it's just going to add a lot of damage to you. Ideally, I think damage percent cooldown and area damage is probably where you want to end up with. But initially, something with dexterity on because it gets run through the guardians uh, is quite nice. You need the 65% cooldown on Vengeance, otherwise you've got to take a lot more cooldown rolls, so it is quite important to get a nice Dawn. Now if you're lucky and you find a really good one or a Primal one, um, then you, of course you can then move on and spend your crafted Primal, maybe on your Satchel, because as I said earlier it's a little bit hard to get that, or maybe on a cold double crit squirt. Again, this is just the best squirts I've found so far, really nice with the crit rolls, which is great. Not Ancient, which is not so great, and no Cold Percent, which is, again, not so great. So I am on the lookout for a better Amulet. The Guardian stuff, you just got to craft. Again, ideally, you want Dex and Vitality. I think that gives a bit more toughness uh, than going for the Auras here, but Cold and Crit should be absolutely fine. Uh, I think that covers the gear. So just having a look at the skills. I've got the Boar Companion on for the damage reduction Again, to squeeze out a bit more damage, Wolf Companion is probably the meta choice. Uh, I like being tanky though, so I've got the um, Boar Companion on. So perhaps that's a, a swap that I should make on this build. Strafe, Drifting Shadow, it keeps up the movement speed, which is very nice. Of course, the Hungering Arrow gets fired out by the Strafe with the mechanics of the set. Preparation Focus Mind to slowly top up our discipline because I have a nasty habit of over spamming my sm smoke screen. Uh, I do like the displacement rune on here for the 100% move speed. Again, meta choice is probably special recipe, giving you more access to it, more dodging power, more squirts up time. Just generally basically being a better player, I just like moving fast uh, I'm not thinking too much about avoiding stuff. Vengeance Star Cart we covered, Hungering Arrow, Devouring Arrow we covered. Uh, passwise wise awareness for the cheat death possibly don't need this um it's quite a tanky build it's got quite a lot of high recovery you've got a cheat death of the templar so again eking out a little bit more damage i'd probably consider going archery just to squeeze out a bit more uh, ambush 40 percent more damage against 75 percent health enemies this is powerful passive when you're one-shotting stuff um, so again, if you're playing down those lower tiers probably more powerful less powerful i think the further on you go Cool the weak, slowed enemies get 20% increased damage, and then Thrill the Hunt, Hatred Spenders, slower enemies, which is uh, pretty nice. I'm not sure, somebody might be able to crack me, the Kungring Arrow might do a slow on its own because it's a cold skill, and if it is, then again, we've got another uh, passive that we can choose. Now, some people run, instead of picking the smokescreen displacement to try and uh, like avoid stuff and move about you can go for fan of knives and then put on numbing traps giving 25 percent damage reduction but you have to hit things with the uh, with the fan of knives for that to be active uh, and i'm not sure there's terribly much else um you, you don't need the life per hit you don't need the increased armor and resistances really tactical advantage would be move speed so that's one that you can work in again if you're gonna take the um take the tears down a little bit uh, and that should absolutely be fine. You shouldn't struggle for hatred at all. Uh, occasionally, if you like, go the wrong way and there's nothing to hit, then you might start to go a little bit low. But overall, you don't really need any resource cost reduction. The the altar being unlocked with the resource on Chris generally is enough. Um, and obviously, we're not taking attack speed on like gloves, on um, anything but the satchel, really. So that is the way number one to play it. Now, way number two is slightly different. Uh, and what I'm using uh, actually is, is my Fortress Ballista. So in the second variant that I play, I pop on the dual wielding and then uh, instead of the convention of elements, the Siri Satchel goes in here, uh, which begins with T because it's the ninth Siri Satchel. This offers some upside. We lose the convention of elements, we lose the big spike damage on cold, but we do get a nice big fat shield with our Fortress Ballista. Uh, this does allow you to be a lot sloppier with your gameplay in terms of like standing in stuff because the shield will absorb quite a little bit. Again, you need to find that kind of like difficulty level where you can absorb pretty much everything. But of course, if you just go stand in explosions and fields of electricity, uh, the shield will drop. But you'll get a lot more uptime on your squirts. Of course, you lose the convention. And I'd say really, with maps where you get a shield pile on, then the Fortress Blister then becomes completely redundant. Whereas when you get a shield pile on, you've essentially got two minutes of free 200% damage on cold because the Fortress Blister is not doing uh, anything for you but I was playing it like this for a long way. The other advantage early on in a season 
is, is that whilst I've got a nice primal fortress ballista here, it doesn't matter if you've got a crap one, um, it, you know, as long as you get that uh, shield up, it should be okay. There's a level you'll be able to play, even if your shield is, is not the biggest. But the series satchel in the cube is nice because it gives the maximum modifier and uh, so that is pretty good if you're going to go off and do bounty farming visions of mt anything like that you want to swap on to the yank recurve just simply for the huge resource cost reduction because of course we do know that in the general world of sanctuary there are not as many monsters to hit we can't get resource back on crit so it's just a lot easier to play with yang's recurve and then satchel on the character and of course you're gonna have to swap yourself back on to a dawn uh, in the cube just to get that vengeance uptime if you're looking for the damage reduction and the damage so that's kind of how i'm running my visions at the moment again if you want to maximize for gold finds you can do uh, for, for of course torment 16 farming you don't need your focus you don't need restraints those those options become completely open to you and um, you can do whatever you want you can slap a rogue on the character and still have a free ring for something like stone of jordan convention of elements uh, elusive ring is quite a nice one for visions of enmity because every time you pop your smoke screen you're gonna get a 60 damage reduction where is it is it the elusive ring why do they all start with the Oh, elusive begins with E, not L. I, f I definitely flunked English. Yeah, elusive ring, 60% damage reduction is a pretty nice one. Uh, that's something that can go on the character. Uh, Stone of Jordan, I think I mentioned. Zodiac, if you want some more cooldown, uh, is, a, is a nice ring, obsidian ring of the Zodiac. I need to watch more Sesame Street. And then there is one more ring. What was I going to mention? The Larceny ring can be a nice one as well. And that is Raquel's, I think. Uh, so that is, it's very confusing to find things now that the cube is open, we've got everything in all the slots. The Raquel's Ring of Larceny, this will proc a fear, fear procs move speed, uh, and again that can be quite nice. You also don't really need the Guardians for Torment 16, so again something like the uh, Wazishen Arm Guards uh, would add move speed, you can plop them on, pull up a gold wrap if you want to be uh, immortal whenever you pick up gold. Loads you can do with the Gears of Dreadlands Demon Hunter, but I guess the main thing is, is in terms of solo XP, you can go off and you can crunch your 120s. It's definitely easier to play than Bone Spear. Um, Bone Spear at times can be a little squishy or a little difficult or a little tight on resources, and this is just pretty much set and forget. All you've got to do is press Hungering Arrow once every four seconds, and you are pretty, pretty powerful. That's the build, guys. At least we do get to use the cube with the convention of elements. But again, I think it's going to be like this for many seasons until we roll around to something like Ethereals uh, or, or something that affects some of the other builds. It's probably always going to be the case that this Gears of Dreadlands Demon Hunter is just so, so strong. I'm going to try and check out Fist of the Heavens Crusader next. Uh, Legacy of Dreams Necro Nova is on the hit list. I would like to make a wizard and play some Tal Rasha. Um, lots to do, and I'm going to try and pump out as many video guides for you as I can. I hope you're enjoying Season 31. I've been the Filthy Casual. Take it easy, guys. Peace. <laughs>